welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome once again to the WP Builds podcast. You have reached episode number 287, entitled When to Use Third-Party Add-ons. It was published on Thursday the 14th of July 2022. My name's Nathan Wrigley and I'll be joined in a few short minutes by my good friend David Wormsley so that we can have our chat on the podcast. But before then, a few small bits of housekeeping. If you're enjoying WP Builds, I'd very much appreciate it if you could go over to your podcast player of choice and give us some kind of review. Perhaps that might be Apple Podcasts or wherever you consume your podcast. We'd be most grateful if you could do that. It's a very, very good way of spreading the word about the podcast. The other thing that you could do is go to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe and over there you're going to find all of the ways that you can stay in touch with us. For example, there's our Twitter feed, which is at wpbuilds. There's our YouTube channel and of course, there's some mailing lists over there as well. The last thing I want to mention is wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. It's a bit like Black Friday, but every single day of the week, significant coupon codes for everything in the WordPress space. There's many, many things. It's searchable and filterable. So it's blocks, plugins, themes, that kind of thing. So wpbuilds.com forward slash deals if you fancy getting yourself a bit of a bargain. The WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by GoDaddy Pro. GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place. Invoice clients and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more by going to go.me forward slash WP Builds. Once more, go.me forward slash WP Builds. And we do thank GoDaddy Pro for their continued support of the WP Builds podcast. Okay, what have we got on the show for you today? Well, as I said right at the top, this episode is called When to Use Third-Party Add-ons. The fact of the matter is, in WordPress, there's a plugin for more or less everything. Bookings, done, commerce, done, learnage management, it's all done, done, and done. In fact, in many cases, there's multiple plugins for the exact same job, so we're a bit spoilt for choice. But are there times when it's better to find a third-party solution, perhaps a SaaS? Are there scenarios where it's better for you or for your clients? And that's the topic that David and I are chatting about today. I hope that you enjoy it. Welcome to another in the Business Bootcamp series where we relearn everything we know about building WordPress sites and running a web design business from start to finish. We're on the fourth episode of season three where we're looking at the technical build and today we are discussing when to use third-party add-ons. So I should just briefly explain the series. We're taking contrasting approaches on getting our new businesses running and our first client's site built. She's a lawyer with no previous site called Miss A. And Nathan, as usual, shall we just go through the routine? Yeah, let's of- just do it quickly. Let's get it out of the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing the traditional waterfall, waterfall-based approach. So give a contract, give a proposal, get it all signed off, go away, build, and then come back present the website is finished everybody's happy crack open the champagne it's brilliant (laughs) yeah the project based i'm going agile where we get out a minimal viable product see how it's improving as we go along and i collaborate with the client on an ongoing strategic basis that's how we're doing it so i don't think this will come into this episode though no not so much i I could deliberately try and contradict you but maybe there's just consensus throughout this whole thing I think you'll yeah I think you'll need to actually because there's no balance in this as we were discussing before because we I guess we've headed in one direction but yeah let's describe the problem so as we're building our lawyer's site it's going to be with WordPress of course and um it's going to be a fairly simple thing but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to use WordPress for everything so our client's simple site could still need some add-ons like chat pop-ups newsletters even a booking system so we have to make these decisions do we go the WordPress route or whether we decide to go third parties on this one 
And how do we decide case by case or do we have a preference for one or the other? And I wanted to talk about this, Nathan, because for me, so much has changed since when I started. Have you changed, do you think, in what your preference is? Do you go to WordPress first? or? When, yeah, when I began using CMSs, so Drupal and so on, I yeah. always tried to find the solution. That was a module in Drupal. And then when I moved over to WordPress, it was a, a plugin for WordPress. And I always had this kind of impression that the WordPress way was going to be the, the best way. Mm. Yeah. And then I realized, actually, in, in many cases, the, the sort of SaaS way, let's just call it SaaS for third party, Mm-hmm. Um, was often superior in certain given situations. So a, a good example might be just something which is heavy on resources um, mm. or something where you really, really, really need that data. It's absolutely mission critical, uh, but yet you've got a website, a WordPress website on incredibly cheap hosting. There's definitely mm. compromises. And there's lots of things now where I will only use SaaS because I just believe that the different tools out there are so good and they've configured the UI and they've got the flow perfected. Um, I just use those because that's now muscle memory and I'm familiar with them. There probably are equivalents in WordPress, but I, I'm no longer on the prowl trying to find mm. the perfect, for example, booking system in WordPress. What about mm. you? Yeah, well, I, I mean, kind of my history, going back to 2007 when I started with it, I mean, this was just after pages were introduced and before WordPress was a proper CMS. So I was really carried away with the excitement of what were the developers there in what was really a simple blogging platform system, trying to turn it into something where you could create other types of sites. And I was really always looking to kind of what was happening there. Uh, but now I've changed, you know, we, we've moved on so much. The type of authors that we have out there are providing DIY solutions for everybody. And there's so many where there was hardly anything back then. I flipped the other way, but it's partly because I've learned, as you kind of alluded to, the the downside of the performance by adding too much into WordPress against whatever hosting you might have. It's going to cost, in our case, the client something if it's going to use up server resources. So, yeah, wherever there's a system now. And I guess, you know, moving on to our next thing, I mean, how do we decide with this? And for me, it's about what I want my clients to know about my business, what I'm prepared to take responsibility for. So if I can offload something, they see me as the WordPress person and I manage their sites for them. So if it's a complex WordPress solution that's going in there, they're not going to know whether it's me or the thing that we've added in. Whereas if I use a third party or SaaS solution, then it's very clear. I can say "Ah, nothing to do with our website. You'll have to chat to these people. Yeah, I guess it's really that there's a lot going on here, isn't there? Most notably, the cost of all of these things. So as an example, mm. it may be that there's, let's let's just take the, the example, a, a simple one, just a contact form. And I think in our yeah. case, Miss A is definitely going to want, want a contact form on her, mm-hmm. her web page. Mm. Now, you could definitely go and find all sorts of form solutions as SaaS. And mm. I guess you would just have to weigh up whether or not the, the the complexity of what they're going to need is going to require you to go the SaaS route. Now, in my case, if it's just a simple contact form, 100% of the time I'm going to use a, a probably a free yeah. WordPress form solution because if it's literally name, email, comment, there's just so many good options out there that are free in WordPress. But I guess the more complex it becomes, the more mission critical yeah. it becomes, the more it's obvious that it's going to you know, have to do a lot of crunching of data in the background, the more likely I am to swing to, um, to a SaaS model, to be honest. But if mm. I do that two or three, four times, am I going to run the risk of kind of alienating the client because suddenly they've got this monthly bill of, I don't know, let's say <laughs> yeah. 80 or $100 for things that they'd come to you thinking, well, I, I was kind of coming to you because you did WordPress and I... I thought WordPress could do everything. That's that's I'm not sure because we had a discussion before we clicked record and mm. I was working under the impression that most clients these days probably know a bit about WordPress but don't really think that it can do everything. Whereas you you tended to think that they came to you more and more with, well, WordPress can just do everything. Let's just do WordPress all the way. Yeah, I think this. I mean, I, I've got a, a Beaver Builder beginners group, which I watch, and that has quite a few people who pop in who are just building their first site and they 
you know, preface it with by saying, I, I know nothing about this. But often questions that they will ask later will just be based on the assumption that there is always a plugin for everything in WordPress. And I've found clients as well, some of those have come with that. So I think it's changing a lot, and, but they don't know the consequences of that. They don't know the impact on performance. They don't know that as the, I think the ecosystem's changed, it's accommodating more DIYers and it has to compete on offering new people who might be interested new features so this is always going to have this ongoing maintenance uh, which non-technical people might might not be prepared for so i guess what's changed with me is just that awareness that the whole setup has changed it's not these independent developers who might adopt a, i guess uh, the, the W3C organization, keep it simple, stupid. Don't put in anything more into your system than you need to have there. That's kind of gone out the window if you get into a lot of solutions with WordPress. You know, it, you, you're going to end up with a system that's got more in it than you needed at the time of build. So here's here's an interesting thought. If we were to chart the, the rise of SaaS, let's say mm. over the last 20 years, even yeah. 20 years ago, there was probably nothing. There really was very little. You know, I'm imagining that there were things like Hotmail and yeah. maybe a few <laughs> other things, but very, very little. You know, the, the web was a bunch of static mm. pages. And and along comes CMSs and the, the the fabulous intent of individual citizens to put stuff on the on the internet. And so I feel that, like, CMSs got the jump on functionality. Mm. So WordPress plugins, for example, I feel if you go back like 10 years, they were doing things which SaaS wasn't doing. But then mm. comes things like the mobile phone and the iPhone, and everybody's suddenly always connected, and suddenly this opportunity to create a business around one particular thing. So it might be a booking system, it might be a calendar system, it might be whatever. Imagine any sort of SaaS product. I think... The subscription economy, which feels like it's sort of a decade old, yeah. but in coming becoming increasingly normal, you know, look yeah. at things like Spotify for music and so on, and Netflix. Those those businesses have just started to swell and swell, and now there there probably is more or less a WordPress plugin for everything. I would imagine pretty much, maybe some better than others, but. But there's also yeah. now a SaaS and probably a half a dozen SaaS for everything. Yeah. So I think I think the the march of history we're now at the point where SaaS is is really in every aspect of our lives, and you know we're we're totally comfortable with paying ten, twenty, fifteen, a hundred, whatever it is, dollars a month for this thing which does one thing or several things well, because we just know that it's built only to do that thing really, really superbly. Yeah. And I, I, you know, uh, individual business, businesses will, uh, depending on their relationship with their clients, will uh, probably decide differently. But for me, I'm trying to kind of do a low cost service. And I've, I've, I guess I've realized, which I didn't do in the early days, just what my limits are, if you like, as a developer. So if it's a complex tool, which I rely on a third party for, which might change, and I won't know how to fix it without going to perhaps multiple authors to work out which who has the problem this is beyond kind of what i feel comfortable with so i've kind of pulled back on concentrating what i think i can do you know basic sites where i can use it the look of it i can control with uh, css is probably where i feel most comfortable when it gets into the really technical stuff then i kind of avoid it so yeah and it's just that distinction i i had a case recently where and this happens a lot and i think this is why i believe people do expect stuff two of two of the last clients i've had and in fact perhaps the third one just asked about something recently but they came saying we would like to have this functionality but in two of the cases it was a booking system they wanted it and uh, could i do it and my first thought and this is back to my old days oh yeah we've got this for wordpress we can do this and do that and then i thought about it and I said, when we really teased it out, there was just no justification to spending any real money on it because they had no idea whether anyone would ever use it. Right. And and instead, I just thought, actually, you know what? There's this AppSumo deal for a one-off payment on this $19. Just stick this in, see if it actually gets used because it'll probably work even if it falls you know, apart later and maybe it's not 
dodgy, at least you'll know you've got something to test it out. And right. that's where it's gone. And it's good because when they did have an issue, then I go, yeah, it's not mine. It's it's obviously nothing to do with my site. So That's an interesting case, though, isn't it? The idea that you would try a SaaS app just to see if it's worth developing inside of the WordPress solution. I think yeah. the promise with WordPress all like all those years ago was, was kind of like everything in one place. And so these plugins meant all these things could could be in one place. But curiously, because yeah. WordPress, you know, we've all realized that if you throw in a billion plugins, things are not going to work well for you. There's going to be conflicts <laughs> that everything's going to be slowed down. So maybe we're moving more to specialized platforms. But these these SaaS platforms, they're so good. But Here's the sort of dichotomy. If everything was in yeah. WordPress, at least it would all be in WordPress. Whereas now yeah. we need paid for services like Zapier just so that <laughs> this disparate, disjointed collection of SaaS apps that we're using can can be interoperable because we've got yeah. our we've got our CMS over here um, and we've got our CRM over here, and yet we need it to take form data from over there, and then we need everything to go in a Google Sheet, which then migrates stuff into an Airtable, which then <laughs> updates the you know you you see what I'm saying. So we're yeah, in this real mess at the minute where it, a, a business may have like 12 or 13 of these things going on at once. I, I can still see the promise of doing it in WordPress, but I am more and more reluctant for any of the heavy lifting to be done inside of WordPress. Just because, like you said, the headaches are far less if it's on a SaaS platform. You can just go to their support and get it fixed because that's all they do. If you go to the support of a WordPress plugin, that may be all that they do, but they're also having to deal with the fact that you've got 12 other plugins that might be conflicting, and so it gets more more difficult. We're really talking WordPress down here, aren't we? Well, yeah, but I think, you know, trust in what we're going to use is going to be key, but I think the issues are on both sides here, whether you use SaaS or whether you use WordPress, because you're going to get, you know, good and bad plugins out there. And you know, more or less, we see new, lots of new plugins coming in, perhaps more with a marketing plan, but also we see the way that SaaS is going with lifetime deals. And, you know, often they're jumping in because they're very popular to create a product to, to make the money now with no definite intention of keeping that product running. Mm. And so, you know, we have trust issues, whichever route we go. Do you know, one interesting thing and what why I'm a little bit fearful and why I, I kind of like to push push stuff out to SaaS is because something a client said only yesterday when they got an issue, when they came back saying, surely WordPress has a way of being able to do this. And I just thought, wow, you don't really know that we're talking about a particular plugin that is in WordPress. They can't, it's just all WordPress. Ah, and I, and I thought, yeah, and I thought that's my problem. You know, when it becomes a WordPress solution within it, the client sees me as responsible for it. You know, yes. uh, I can't, I can't wrangle WordPress very well. How, how did <laughs> the know? conversation end up, though? Did you were you able to sort? Of no, it's fine. I explained it. Um, ah. I mean, the problem that they're seeing is is actually not a genuine problem. It's it's a display problem. But yeah, it's it's just I just thought those words were very interesting. I thought, yeah. And and the the expectations and this kind of idea of grouping everything as WordPress, even though it's just third parties who could be really bad people. Yeah, <laughs> you know. To, to be them. honest with you, this is not a, this is this particular topic is not something that I've really thought about in isolation before. But now that we are thinking about it, it is it is pretty obvious to me that over time, these SaaS products are becoming more and more the normal for me. Um, mm. So a, a perfect example is a booking system. And I know that you could absolutely chuck that into WordPress. There's there's probably yeah. dozens of them. And I imagine they all do everything well. But I've, I've just settled on one particular booking system. It's a SaaS product. I've used it for years. I'm totally happy with it. And, mm. and so I'll probably just continue to use that. And if anybody says to me, um, we'd like a booking system, I'm probably going to say, do you know what? I've come to the conclusion for me that it was good to have this as a as a SaaS um, where you just pay them, you know, $10 a month or whatever it might be. And, and I, I really like that because then we don't have to worry. All of the data is held by them. They become the controller of the data and so on and so forth. And yeah. um, and you don't have to worry so much about it. What do you think? And And I think increasingly people are more and more predisposed to understand that there's a there's a $10 fee here and there's a $10 fee here and there's a $10 fee here, not a, okay, we're going to spend $2,500 on the website and we're done. Yeah, and it's fairly low risk. If I was to 
what put me off trying to put these booking systems in for these two clients is that two factors really with it. One was the fact that for me to integrate that into their site with a plugin nicely, uh, and maybe in one case I would need to have WooCommerce, which is very heavy, and then the bookings plugin on. I'd have to style all that. There would be quite an you know upfront cost which would be as almost zero cost, you know, apart from the monthly charge to embed that within a page, you know, mm. and, and leave pretty much the default styling or anything that this application gave me to do that just to test it out. So that's what held me back. But on top of it was the fact that with both of these clients, um, that they, they, um, they're not that they don't have the time to be learning how to use the system so one of them asked me really to create a sort of whole calendar uh, setup Ooh. but as since I, I said i don't think that's right for we need it yet maybe later da, da, da. i think best will just embed a google calendar but that is too much for her to to kind of spend some time on to learn to set it up so i just think even if i built these solutions for them the training as well that would have to go and it would all be on my shoulders, you know? Yeah, whereas if it was the training for the SaaS platform, presumably they've got their own tutorial yeah. videos and what have you of how to use it. It's interesting what you said just now because it made me think of several times where I've done the same thing. You you install a WordPress plugin and immediately it looks out of place. So you spend quite yeah. a long time rounding off the buttons and making all the buttons the same um, mm. background color and all of that and make it just so that it looks completely seamless. And then... But that's totally expected. But then if you install a SaaS app, you just chuck in the, the bit of the snippet of code. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you, you do, know, yeah, even though it n in no way looks like the site, you're just like, yeah, it's fine. I, I'm just yeah. totally reconciled to the fact that I can't change that, apart from maybe some modest styling if you're lucky. But it's it's fine. I don't care. Um, do you know what? I nobody does particularly care. I, I honestly can't remember a time where a client said, but that calendar doesn't look like mm -hmm. the calendar that I would like it to look like. Just like, okay, <laughs> there's the calendar. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, it's our own hang up, but I realized that. And I, I think this is where there is a distinction between my kind of moving to the agile approach away from the, the project base. So when people ask me that stuff, I think, how can I create this solution for the thing that the client wants for this product? For a project when i move to agile and i think okay we're getting just something out there and to test how it works i start to think very differently i start to think well do you need this yet there isn't a deadline to a right. project we'll, right. we'll invest more money when it proves itself to be worthwhile and and then and it's the that's to, that actually change of approach i think has made me change how well what tools i might use you know in wordpress it, it's interesting because i guess your model the agile approach, you know, there's a minimum amount of money up front and the, the back mm. end, the, the, you know, the sort of the, the long tail of the mm. relationship with the client is where the money's coming in. You know, you're going to you're going to tweak things over the days, weeks, months to come. So putting those hours in at the beginning, tweaking the booking form or whatever it might be, they're not yeah. really going to fit in, are they? Whereas, look just pay ten dollars to this company every month and it'll just work and it'll work you know ad nauseum is absolutely yeah. fine whereas for me if i'm going for the sort of slightly bigger ticket not um, pricing i i feel that i probably would have a slightly different conversation you know would you want your booking system to look like this or are you happy to to pay yeah. um for the SaaS app going forwards each month and we'd probably get into a conversation and wrangle that one and i don't know which way that would go so much yeah, you would just get into style. I mean, if you added in your own solution and felt the responsibility for it, you had a deadline for it, you would almost just instinctively want to just style it and create it and make it look great because you're you're ending with a finished product you hand That's over right. at a certain point. That's and right. where, you, where you think, no, actually, we'll just stick it up and see how it goes because no one really cares about your website, really, It's whether it suits them or not. And then that approach makes you... I wouldn't say slack necessarily, but it just means you don't invest more money than you need to too early. Yeah, it's it's a really good point. And obviously, if if this was some sort of like giant blue chip company, I think mm. you really would have to <laughs> yeah. sweat the detail, <laughs> yeah. and you would have to make sure that um, that everything looked exactly as it ought to look, e even if that yeah. was you know some sort of enterprise level SaaS with all of the styling that might come with that. But yeah, it's interesting. Depending on the different kind of client and what their expectations are, you might have to spend a little bit more time but should we just break it down though for, for miss a so miss a is she's a lawyer yeah. she's just beginning she's never had a website she's mm -hmm. coming to us for advice we're supposed to be helping her through the initial hurdles what kind of 
what kind of add-ons plugin? Let, let's go both plugins and SaaS. What kind of things are we going to be telling her that she may need, bearing in mind that she's a complete Luddite? Let's just assume that. And she doesn't know what a website can do other than that it's browsable on the internet. Oh, that's a really good question because we're going to have to have a conversation about link it as best as we can to our business aims, aren't we? I mean, a booking system for start, probably the most complex thing I can imagine that she yep. would have. Yeah, and uh, honestly, with- I think I think clients actually get quite excited when you start talk, to talk about these things because then suddenly the, the website's starting to do things for them. And it's yes. beginning to save them time and it's beginning to bring them money and bring them clients. And the amount of conversations that I had, I like this. Oh, had you thought that you could do this? Oh, no, I didn't know that was part. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's get into that conversation. So sorry, I interrupted a booking system. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, if that would save them, to, I mean, there's, we don't know about our setup there but she's got an office she's got staff and somebody has to work as a receptionist there taking her bookings and organizing that planning maybe a booking system will save a lot of time for their company that they the person who wants to book time can just do it online they yeah get a notification. It's, it's interesting actually because um i don't know how that conversation would go because i know that time and money and the availability for lawyers Mm. Uh, is quite a quite a thing, isn't it? So it'd be interesting to see how that conversation goes because I can imagine fifty percent of the time it would be no way do I want to be booked um, arbitrarily by something that's on a calendar online because I just want to you know have sp- specific hours or what <laughs> have you. But equally, I could see it. You know, if if they're keen to generate new business and they're starting out, yep, please make me as available yeah. as possible because I I want to meet new people that I've never come into contact with before. Yeah. I think the newsletter option there or the email list is obviously a marketing tool which you know everyone could use but not many businesses won't be able to invest the time in it so you'd need to have some discussion on whether that would be practical whether we would be able to put out that content or would be prepared for somebody to put that content out yeah, so, yeah. and you know I don't think you can necessarily tell like I've got you know a a client who's an electrician who makes really really good use out of his newsletters keeping in contact with anybody who's basically contacted him one off for a one-off job you know because he's got their email usually in the form they'll say yes i want this or they want his downloadable how to choose an electrician book and clearly that is working for him so i think almost most businesses you have to say this can really work for you but (laughs) yeah it's a bit like blog post writing isn't it it's it's yeah you know there's no no, there's no actual downside but there are the there is the the reality that it's probably going to be a bit of drudgery and you may not get the the return of the investment that you imagined and so on but i i think offering that is a really good idea the idea of you know newsletter sounds a bit cheesy doesn't it in this sense but it, yeah, it, it might does, be yeah. just you know keeping informed letting people know about some update to some practical bit of the law or what have you, things that may be of interest to their clients. You know, certainly I've got solicitor clients in the past who, um, who've who made great use of their newsletter, others who had all these services but never used it even once. And I think this is the point, we've talked about this before as well when it comes to, you know, do we put in a blog because we've got this in WordPress straight away for the clients, we, we can tell them all the merits of it and then we put it in and then of course they don't use it. So I, I do think now if I have this conversation, I feel like I have to support that with, you know, do you need some help with copyright, how you might build up something which will just auto generate content out for you to do this and, and add that on. And, and in that way, in some ways, I feel again it takes me a bit further out of dealing with just the wordpress stuff i'm probably likely to go for a third party solution and spend the time that i've given them on helping them to set this thing up that might work for them than i might do spending time trying to set up the technical aspect of it in wordpress so for the newsletter piece we are going to recommend yeah. a SaaS, though aren't we in terms of deliverability at least anyway we're I not going to so. be we're not going to be sending this out from the the server this This is going to be maybe a connection to some other, maybe it'll create the posts inside of WordPress and then send them off to a third party service to handle the, the delivery and the bounce and all of that. But the but there is the op- I mean Mail Poet is an, an example of a plugin that kind of does it all from WordPress, so it's got its own mail out system. 
So how um, does that work? Do you know? Is that connecting through some sort of API? It wraps, you know, you create the email, press send, and does it send it to any mail poet service or does it just send it off your infrastructure somehow? It's it's off there. I mean, the I bought uh, the the premium of this, never used it because of the, and even if you use the free version of theirs, they give you this free, effectively, transactional email. So any of your WordPress emails can be sent to you through the same system that that will also send out newsletters. So you don't need the third parties that you've got. You can do it all from um, MailPoet. As a, I could be wrong on this. I hope I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that is a whole baked-in system which you can just use there. Um, yeah, I, a, I've used several... I haven't used MailPoet, but I've used several solutions in the past. I've used um, a self-hosted thing called Sendy which is uh, yes. kind of fun, and you can connect that with... I'll come on to that. But I, I, I did for a time use a, a WordPress plugin called Mailster, which yes. handles everything, but then the GDPR came along, and I thought at that point, actually, do you know what? This doesn't seem like the most sensible thing. And when I say it handles everything, you know, I connected it to Amazon SES for deliverability. But you could yeah. you could keep your list inside of WordPress. It would be in the database, and so I decided to... Uh, stop using that um, and then now i'm using um for the newsletters that go out well it'll go out with this post i mm. use newsletter glue which is a a block based plugin so i create the post for this website so it, it's containing the the short code for the podcast player it's got all the text but it's also got some conditional blocks so put this text in the newsletter but don't put this text put this in the post and then when the post is published, it goes to a third party service. It could be anything that they've got. You know, there's um, Active Campaign and MailChimp and all sorts of other ones. It goes off to there. It just wraps it up as a, you know, all the HTML sends it over to there. And then that takes care of it. Mm. It's really nice. I mean, I, show, I was showing with you, it's related to this, uh, how it's still embedded in me, the idea of going to WordPress first. So um, I, the, the service that I have to be able to send out my emails um, was isn't supported, isn't so popular, isn't supported by many, and including the forms uh, plugin that I use. So I used another one which did include that as one of its integrations, and I set all of that up. So it's another premium plugin that I put in just so I could use WordPress to add this connection to it. And of course, you know, quickly I realized it, it didn't, it didn't work the way I wanted it. It was unnecessary. All I needed to do was to use the actual services option to be able to create your own forms and embed them in your site works just as well. So it just shows that even this is quite recent. So yeah, there is that, you know, you can make it much more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah. Okay, so, that, so you had a form solution in WordPress that connected when an yeah, email well, address field was filled out, it would then push that to the to the no, mail sending I, service, but the mail sending service all the time had a form builder of their own that you could just embed. Exactly, but, oh, the, the, but this was just for subscription only, so okay. I only needed so the form, email I, only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. So I abandoned my regular forms plugin to get another premium regular form, just so I could connect this. When all I needed to do was to go to the service I'd already paid for and embed because they had a form builder ah, and embed intriguing. it. So you okay. know, it just shows you, I think, how ingrained. And I, I would think for anybody new coming into WordPress, that's the thing. It's the place you go to. You're in WordPress. You go to look to WordPress for all your solutions. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> anyway. I, I think, okay, so we've done two so far. Bookings, mm -hmm. maybe they'll be willing. Maybe they won't. Yeah. This is Miss A. Newsletters, maybe. I feel there's less chance. I feel the bookings are going to be an easier pitch than the newsletter. But one thing is forms. We, we've just mentioned it. Um, yeah. You know, you could get really complicated. I can imagine going to a lawyer's website where they specialize on, I don't know, conveyancing, which in the UK is the term for anything to do with like houses, basically, buying and selling houses, mortgages and all of that. And you could you could really get into that, couldn't you? You know, see how, see how sliders to how much is the value of your property and all of this kind of stuff. And you really could go into the weeds with that. And there's a whole bunch of WordPress plugins that do that. But you yeah. could also just go for something like Contact Form 7 with, you know, here's your name, your email <laughs> yeah. address and the subject. And I feel at the beginning in your system, just yeah. that's the way to go, right? Just get a quick, simple contact form and see if anybody uses it and go from there. Yeah. If, oddly enough, I did buy a lifetime deal on 
a contact form and stuff that you could just embed into any of your sites there. I, I bought it. I've not used it. What was quite nice about it was the statistics that it could provide to you across multiple places where you put your form. So that was the only advantage I could see. But for the rest of the time, of course, I'm just going to use WordPress for that. Mm-hmm. Um, chat yeah. widgets. That's, that's a thing that a lot of clients ask for. Um, you know, somebody's told them, I guess, that uh, this could really improve stuff. And if you're available to talk to anybody who's interested on your site, um, my experience is that most clients that don't have the time and that the, the chat widget des- definitely needs to disappear when they're not online. Yeah, <laughs> I feel uh, that I feel that it, it's it, it can actually I can get quite excited about forms. Sadly, it's a very oh, sad on. admission to make. If but, I cut you off on no, your form no, chat. No, no, I think there's quite a nice conversation to be had there about the complexity that you can have because in yeah. the in the rare case where that complexity is really going to be useful you could really drill down on what that form looks like, you know, some sort of intake form or just imagine. So all of these complicated WordPress solutions, you know, WS form, Fluent form, Gravity Mm -hmm. form, the list goes on. They could all be a really integral part of the business. And I, I think those conversations are really good to have because it may be that you know what is inside the form builder that they would never in a million years think is possible. So uh, you could really do them a service by saying, well, hang on a minute, let's really go into this and figure out what, what these forms could do for you. But yes. I feel in this exact case with this exact client, that conversation, you know, it's maybe a, would you like to explore this or do you just want a normal contact form? Yeah, and you made a vaguer point when we were talking earlier about how this can... So in the, in the legal situation, there may be circumstances where she needs signatures or stuff she needs stuff being uploaded to her that might be legal so she might want all those requirements but then again you'd probably with her profession then still want to avoid wordpress because yep. <laughs> because of the you know legal implications of taking in that data and be responsible for uh, it you yeah and one would hope to- being a lawyer that that miss a would <laughs> yeah. really get that uh, just just as an aside for example my accountant Mm-hmm. you're doing nothing on their website. They've obviously got this solution. And, it, you know, it's it, in a way, it's kind of comical because you can so see that they've uploaded their logo and their logo mm-hmm. sort of clumsily appears in the sort of top left and it doesn't quite fit. So mm-hmm. you know that this is a SaaS app because the, the it just doesn't fit. The logo is the wrong dimensions. Whatever guidelines there were to upload the logo of the certain size, they ignored them completely. But but they've got that tool, and it does all the things that the accountants want. And it, there would be no way I would be able to do that in WordPress because, you know, it's getting – it's them pushing – content to me i get an email with a unique link on it if that link expires i can no longer see that content i've got to go in i've got to read it i've got to tick a box to say that i've read it and then i've got to sign it and that signature has to be passed back to them if i miss something the software automatically reminds me and eventually we go through the process and my accounts get signed off and it's brilliant but it's really complicated and really specific to their niche and their industry and i bet there's a ton of lawyer uh, CMSs just like that that do all of that stuff that lawyers need that's nothing to do with WordPress. Have you needed to do a complex form for a business like this before? No, the only really, really complex form that I ever did was for myself, Um, like an intake form for clients. But guess what? Nobody really filled it out because it was really complicated. I, uh, that's my thing. And often it's a kind of onboarding or it's rather a way of excluding people, you know, you know, uh, tick here if you're smelly, tick here if you're poor. That's right. Yeah. But also <laughs> get it, it really is the build it and they will come thing. And actually it's build it. They will take one look and run for the hills because <laughs> yeah. they can see that there's, oh, this is the first of seven pages, is it? Hmm. It, but, you know. Uh, exactly. Uh, it, Sorry, I was going to go in with that. I think this is where Agile has started to make me think a little bit like that rather than, you know, early on deciding that, well, we want our form to do this and we don't want these people, we want to exclude this. So let's just stick up the most basic form to get people in. And then when there's a problem, let's add 
you know, according to that problem. Let's make yeah. the form more complex. But, that but imagine round. the lawyer had a repeatable process. Yeah. Like, let's say that upon taking on a new client, they, they have to get X, Y, Z done. You could build a form that they could just link to and run through mm. that process because you know it, they're not on they're not um, they're not trying to gain a client they've already got a client but they're trying to get the client to go through the hoops that they need to go through that could uh, be really yeah. useful so it's yeah. not discovering new clients it's about saying look you've you've thanks for joining um, we we now need seven things from you this is the quickest way to do it you could come into the office and dump it all on our desk and that's fine but if you just upload all the bits and pieces through here then you'll save yourself time. And yeah. so those kind of scenarios, I think, would really work well. And I can imagine the lawyer making use of that. Obviously, it's not going to have that interactivity. It's probably just going to be one way. And then it's then we're back to email, which may not be perfect. But, but at least you could consume things through a form that way. Yeah. So form, yeah, they think, I mean, you need a good forms plugin, don't you, if you're in a yeah. business? Because you do need to provide that. And, and that's where it wins over... Uh, SaaS solutions, I think, on yep. the whole. Yep, yep. Um, so there's loads of that. So we've done newsletters, booking systems, um, contact forms. What's next? I was talking about chat widgets because they used to be some of the early ones I got introduced to and I put it on some sites where WordPress ones only. But now I think almost nobody would use one that's WordPress only because there's so many competitive free third-party services to yeah. hook you in. yeah. And they um, do all sorts of things like knowledge bases and they connect you and, you know, it can connect to different agents and you can, I don't know, yeah. you can, they can throw stuff. At, yeah, I feel that the, the time for WordPress and chat widgets is gone, really. I think it's SaaS all the way, isn't it? Yeah. Do you use them much? Do you Like if you're stumbling around the web, a website of some company that you've never come into contact with, do you often find yourself getting in the chat? Because I rarely do. I'm only really using chat widgets for support on services i'm already involved in yes that's that's exactly it for me and honestly i i don't i really don't like them they do the opposite for me if i go to a site and up pops this some with somebody you know animated maybe waving at me i'm here to help you it's like go away just i've, I've just arrived go. yeah <laughs> uh, too pushy but you know what honestly i just don't know how to judge this and i think you know it's one of these testable things because I, my old colleague I, I used to say that she was quite keen that clients asked her for them and she was quite keen with it and i was going really do it and she was going i use them all the time she says yeah i do she, think I do think of, we're unique. Yeah. I think a lot of people do use them. And the fact that they are ubiquitous yeah. across the internet, yeah. especially Intercom, that that's the seems to be Intercom and Crisp and a few others that have just dominated that market. They uh, yeah. everybody's just familiar with them now. You know, that sound, that boop, boop sound that you get whenever a reply <laughs> comes through. You you kind of know how that all works. I think it's I think it's totally worth mentioning it. But you've got to yeah. you've got to man it on the other end, haven't you? There's no point in putting up a chat widget if you're not going to commit to responding in a timely manner. Because to me, if if there's chat, but nobody's mm -hmm. replying to the chat and it just says leave your email, to me, mm -hmm. just send me to a form. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, whereas if it's chat and then I can see within five minutes somebody's replying. That seems to be the the best purpose. I don't know. Maybe I'm just an old curmudgeon, but I oh, well. definitely think worth worth mentioning. But not yeah, worth, I think it's worth WordPress. mentioning. Would you ever mention the kind of hybrid between a form and a chat widget, which is the auto bot chats? You know, where you've already pre organized certain things that they might want. So it's a kind of system you do you know what i mean you tick something are you interested in this and then it gives you a whole bunch of options like that and it I, seems to talk to you yeah i don't know i mean my personal proclivity there is that i don't really i never get farther than the first question as soon as i realize it's a bot i'm closing mm -hmm. it down and moving on but that's just me mm -hmm. um if it's just using it to filter you to get you to the right person well that's great i can make use of that but if it's just trying to act as a shepherd to get me to i don't know a, a, the page on the website then no I, i'm really mixed about that the whole ai pretending to be real human thing there yeah i don't know i think it's a bit strange uh, yeah and actually i'm pleased i just asked that because it just made me actually think again back to the kind of agile side of it is the fact that you would put a lot of work into pre-guessing 
how people behave and what they want. So I think it probably wouldn't be the thing that were put on a site if I knew that all the questions came down to a particular bunch of routes through the site being live, yeah. then it might be the time to think about it. So I, yeah. I guess I've come up with my own answer to yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's good, yeah. But also <laughs> imagine, the, like, th this particular business, it's Miss A. Miss mm. A is trying to demonstrate her credentials as a lawyer, but also as a human being, that she's got this, like, public face and she's there to help you through your troublesome legal problem. It doesn't feel kind of like that's the right message if you go to the website and you get a robot <laughs> yeah it's yes. selling selling the wrong thing it's like miss a what you're a robot are you yeah. what's going on there so i don't know so definitely yeah. there's purpose to it and millions of businesses are using it and probably it's very effective but i think in this particular case yeah no maybe a chat widget but be there for the chat but i've got a feeling miss a is going to be way more busy than to corris correspond in chat so contact form yeah Okay. Yeah. Well, what we've else? all gone crazy, haven't we? Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, we've gone crazy on automation. So I think, you know, the, those who are going to lead from now on are the ones who kind of take that time out to personalize and be there and be less, you know, online, if you like, feel like you're really connected with a real person. Yeah. So I think we probably need to be the other side of where that curve is going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't got next really, other than one I threw in here, which is the kind of... The, Google Analytics plugins is another plugin that you could add in, but you're actually effectively rearranging a third-party solution. So I have installed these kind of plugins for clients, and they've really loved it. They go in the dashboard and they can see basic summary of you know the stats on their site. But I've kind of thought now that it's probably a bit of a mistake. I should have just spent a bit more time just working out how to set them up nice reports using Google Analytics. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. And again, I'm going to imagine specifically in this case that Miss A is probably not going to be too bothered about the, <laughs> she, the statistics coming care. through Google Analytics. My my experience has been that every time I've set up Google Analytics and gone through the process of explaining how it all works, as soon as the explanations are over, that's the last time they ever look at it. Um, and mm. then I get the email a few months or years later saying, how do we log into Google Analytics again? Okay, off we go. Um, and then they look at it once and then it's forgotten again for ages. And they just probably have got some board meeting where they've got to justify how many visitors they've had to the website and explain whether the return on the investment for building the website is worthwhile. And so they gather that figure up, move on and never look at it again. That's me being cynical again. No, but that's that's part of the traditional model, and that's where I've gone. But I, now the pressure is on me if I'm going more agile, is to that's what that's really how we're getting that information about how this yeah. site is going to progress through this stuff. So I have to start getting this in a presentable form and talking about it on an ongoing basis. So I I'm definitely lacking in those skills at the okay. moment. So that's and, interesting. Um, so the yeah. reports in this case are more pertinent for you. The, mm. the visibility of the information, the surfacing the information that's important for you to keep the mm. relationship going with the client as opposed to maybe the stuff that the client wants to see. You're looking for areas that are succeeding, areas that are not working out so well so that you can then interpret that for them. So do you do that? Is that part of your system, if you like, as you will browse through the Google Analytics data and draw up conclusions from that for your clients? Mm. I'm getting there. Yeah, and interesting, yeah. and only a few days ago, I talked to one of the clients. Now, when we set it up, we did some keyword research. And it, I've mentioned this before, what they thought would be their most popular service didn't turn out to be in terms of what people were searching for. So I, I arranged the site in order to do it in a different way. So I've been looking at the statistics and just before I t had a chat with her about something else. And I was right. It worked out. More people are going to that page than any other. On nice. It. That's and, nice. Uh, and, uh, so what it's done is that I said, look, it seems to be what I thought was right from the statistics seems to be appearing on your site. Shall we do some content in the future which focuses on that? And that's changed our approach, which, of course, she's agreed to, which will take some time to get round to. But, you know, so in some ways I have moved that way. But up to now, no, I just, yeah, like well, you said. Yeah, my experience was dropping Google Analytics. They they deal with it. But I do, I, what you've just said it is really good because you've you've gone back, you've gone back with information, not only 
that's of interest to them, but proving that you're credible, that your previous suggestion was worth looking at. But also, you know, flip that around. You could have gone back and said, yeah, if you it, know what, uh, I was wrong. Um, we, yeah. we need to turn the boat around and change and tweak and so on. I think that's really interesting. And But that was just a never, a, never an area I had time for because for me, it was all about build the project, ship it, get the next one, build it, ship it, get the next one. Whereas your you're going to be much more in touch with them in the days, weeks, and months to come. I guess at some point you're going yeah. to reach a point where you've got too much of that stuff going on, but that's a happy problem to have. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the appeal of my approach is the fact that let's not waste all your money straight away. Let's see what we can get for your money, and we'll go on that way. And that's the, the how I get the buy-in, you know, yeah. it's that basic, I'm not going to take all your money on this one build. Let's yeah. just do it bit by bit. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we're done. Yeah. I think we are done. Yeah. Next, next time. Next, uh, next time. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, legal you, stuff. You say. <laughs> yeah, legal stuff. We're going to get into, oh, gosh, this is going to be quite a conversation, accessibility and GDPR. So both of these are really hot topics at the moment. Yeah. You'll be doing these episodes by yourself, David. Uh, I won't have anything to <laughs> I'll be ranting. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all in the news at the moment, isn't it? Anyway, so, all right, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. That was lovely. Thanks for that. David. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. Always a pleasure chatting to my good friend David Wormsley about all of these things. If you're interested in that and you want to leave us a comment, by all means, go over to wpbuilds.com, search for episode number 287, and leave us a comment there. Remember, we always welcome your support in terms of reviews on places like Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. That is always most welcome. The WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by GoDaddy Pro. GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL and 24-7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more features and to manage multiple sites in one place. Invoice clients and get 30% off new purchases. Find out more at go.me forward slash WP builds. And we thank GoDaddy Pro for their continued support of the WP Builds podcast. Okay, we will be back next week. We will be back on Monday for the live This Week in WordPress show. Join me and two or three WordPress guests as we go live, wpbuilds.com forward slash live, 2 p.m. UK time. And if you subscribe to get our emails, then you'll get that as a podcast episode. Of course, you'll also get that if you have us in your podcast player of choice. But that's it for this week. I hope that you enjoyed it. All that it remains for me to do today is to say... Cheesy music fading in. Stay safe. Bye-bye for now.